Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library, and today we're going to learn to draw and paint The Scream by Edvard Munch. You've probably seen this painting somewhere before, though you might not know much about it. It was painted in 1893, which is three years after Van Gogh died and Monet was still alive and painting. It's still, it's this, this what big chunk of time where a lot of stuff was happening in the art world. Now, Monet and Van Gogh, to a certain extent, were called Impressionists. They were still doing stuff that was pretty realistic. And all of that started when the camera was invented. And if you could take a photograph, then why paint something that looks exactly the same? So that's when realism kind of started translating into impressionism and this which is an example of expressionism uh, munch is one of the first people to start painting feelings so he's adding to the scene how he was feeling which is clearly not pleasant in this case um, a lot of his paintings are kind of dark and sad he had a hard life, but he was one of the first people to translate his feelings into a painting. And that's why it's really important and why it's interesting. And I don't know about you, sometimes I feel like screaming too. And you know, why not paint my feelings instead of screaming for the neighborhood? Anyway, so here are our supplies. To draw it, you need some kind of paper. I have watercolor paper taped down because I'm going to watercolor it. Um, you need a pencil. You need an eraser. Um, and for this one, I'm going to strongly recommend you use some sort of straight edge. I have a T-square here. You, any kind of ruler will work. Really, any kind of stiff paper, like if you have cardstock or a piece of watercolor paper with a straight edge on it, that'll work too. Um, and I have supplies here for painting afterward. Let's get going. The first thing I'm going to do is put the bridge in because we're going to do everything else in this painting relative to where this big bridge is. So I'm going to say, oh, where does it start on the page? It starts somewhere around here, a little, little more than a third in. So I'm going to put a little mark right there. And then the first part of it, the top of it ends, oh, a little bit above the bottom, about here. Okay, so I have a dot here and a dot here. And I'm going to draw a straight line between the two. If you don't have a ruler or a straight edge, that's okay, it doesn't need to be perfect, just go for it. And I'm gonna draw this line lightly because I'll need to erase the stuff I'm drawing in front of it. Okay, the second line is gonna start at the same place, but it's gonna come down a little bit farther. Um, this is kind of like 3D railing. So each one is going to have three lines. So this one, it starts at the same point at the top, but then it's getting closer so it gets bigger toward the bottom. And that one is about there. Okay. The third one is down farther. We're going to start them at the same point. About there. Okay, second rail, be able to tell the difference from where it comes from, and it starts about here, same place, but it ends, oh, down at the bottom, so it ends about here. So I'm going to draw that line. Next one, same thing, start from the same spot. All of these are starting from almost the same spot. Further down. Draw my line. Okay, further down than that. Same spot for the, for the top. And draw my line. Okay. We have one more. Now be sure you're drawing these pretty lightly because we are going to have to erase a chunk of them. This starts from about the same point, too. And so this one, ooh, here or so. I am just all eyeballing where they land. There or so. Sure. One. Same spot to start with. 
to three. And there are rails. Um, we also have in the middle um, ish, not really in the middle. It's let's see, it's about a third into the page here, maybe. Is the railing, and so I'm just going to draw a line pretty straight up and down like that. It goes down a little bit past, just like that. And this is the cr the only crossbar that we see on here. Okay. So there we go. As you can see, yeah. And with that, I'm going to put up this ruler. Okay. Next up, we're going to figure out where the land is. And on the painting, it starts a little bit above the base of, I mean, the, the, the top of the bridge or walkway or whatever it is. And it's just two hills. I'm going to start a little bit above it. All right. I'm just going to do small hill, small hill. And there we go. Okay, and that's the line for our land. Next up, we can do, let's see, let's do this lake. It starts right below it, and it comes straight across to about here or so. So I'm just going to do right under the land. Draw, draw lightly in case you need to erase. Uh, and then it comes down here in. down here a little bit and then back up here okay and there's our water the bottom one doesn't come out that far so I'm going to change that a little bit and then this comes I'll say more smoothly like that okay so there's our lake um, in the middle of our lake are two little boats, at least one boat. I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to do a line here. Okay. And then a little V in like that. And then straight across. And then a line, a shorter line, and a plus on the first one. There's our first boat, and the second one is just a kind of a smaller version without a, a mast. So I'm just going to put this guy here. Same thing. There we go. There are boats. Let's see. Next, let's do the sky. Now, in the painting, you see it was done with pastels, and the sky was, everything was kind of drawn in. But the sky was just kind of, kind of drawn in. We are going to do levels of the sky and paint the sky at different levels. Um, if you're going after this with crayons, which is a great idea, um, then you might not need to do this. But for watercolor, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So the first line is right above where the land is. And so I'm just going to go follow the shape of the land right across. Okay. The next one is a little bit, there's more space in there, but it's the same, the same shape pretty much. So I'm just going to go, just do this, just go in with the shape of the land. The next one is same shape again, but it's going to be closer and we're going to do a line of blue in here. And that's why we're doing that. So up, there we go. And then another wide one, same shape as the land, up, down, up down and don't worry about being perfect with these because moonches are uneven too. Now we're going to do one more close one. Okay. And then now we have one that's an actual different shape. It starts up here and then it comes down a little bit and then up and then kind of just across over here but kind of wavy. So I'm going to do that. Up, down, there's one and then we have one more line up here kind of follows that one but kind of keeps going straight right there so there 
there's that and then I'm just gonna put this hint of this other one up there and there's our sky let's work on the people I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase some of this bridge up here I can always draw it back in I just don't want it to interfere with my people too much because they're hard enough to draw and this will help you see them you don't need to do this on your own so there are two people here right the first one on the left oh has they both they're both wearing hats this hat comes up to about here right I'm just measuring where the people are at this point and then the legs come down to about here okay the second one I'll do the like the brim of the hat it is just above where this is let's see about here right and then his feet hit about here and he's closer so he'll be a little bit bigger okay so now we're gonna draw the people in this shape so the first one I'm just gonna draw the top of the hat here it's kind of like a triangular situation going on there and the hair they're looking out toward the lake so there's that I know this is really small I hope you can see it okay um, and then this just face kind of comes up and then let's see we have shoulders so we're gonna do a curvy line right there for the neck and put bring down shoulders like that okay and then they're kind of loops like that and like that right and then straight down we're gonna make a jacket that goes to no, going close to the bottom it's like that and then at the bottom we have legs so leg pants pants and then we'll put we'll make just kind of squigglies here just to make a line thickness for shoes okay there's our first person second one there's the brim of his hat and then it looks kind of like an M almost so oops up down up the man in the yellow hat maybe that his hat look like that okay so we have that and then we have this line for the hair right it's like that and then we have a line straight down that goes to the top of the railing because he's leaning on the railing so we have a line that goes here and that's going to be his arm okay from there we have an arch here that's his shoulders it comes down like that and goes to where his arm is and then that comes back down here about there because we still have to fit his legs in and then comes across there and then this goes almost straight up to about there and then we bring down the arm and then we add legs he has one of his legs propped up so I'm gonna make one of them straight okay I'm gonna worry about the feet in a minute and then the other one see that goes all the way up there the other one like that like that okay and then we're just gonna be sure and make something that looks like shoes and there are our two people I'm just gonna sketch in the, these lines back in so I know where they are because they're all different colors when we paint them you don't have to be exact with these though just because they're um, so far away okay there are people and all we have left is a line here which we'll do in a minute and our screaming painting subject here's how I'm gonna put him in I'm gonna draw the top of his head we have to figure out where he is he's about from here to let's see about here he's not in the center so I'll put the top of his head here All right I'm just gonna make a little arch and then bring it down and in okay and then down like that okay I mean really 
that's the shape of a skull. I put two eyes in it. They're kind of over on the left side a little bit. So two circles for eyes. And he's looking that way. It's almost like he's looking at those people over there. Make him do that. And we have two dots for nostrils. And then we have a big screaming mouth. Okay. Then for his hands, we're just, they're cupping his face. So we're just going to draw the outside of them. And they come down along the face to there or so. There's the first one, bottom of his sleeve, and then this just follows the line over here and then joins that. For the other one, we're going to do the same thing. It starts about here, comes out, and then follows the shape of his head. Just like that to about there. Now we're going to do the same thing as just bring this down just like that. And there's our head. Next, there's a little V-neck on his robe or shirt or whatever it is. So we're going to make a little V right here. And then we're going to do his uh, sleeves, which come up, say from here, right? Comes out a little bit. And then it comes down and it kind of waves, just like that, right? I'm just going to bring in this elbow and leave it there. Next, this one's a little bit smaller. It comes up right above here to show where his shoulder is. And I see this one did not come up high enough. I'm going to bring this one up higher so it actually looks like his shoulders and not some weird position he's in with dislocated shoulders. So I'm going to raise that a little bit. I'm going to bring this down. There we go. And then this about here, and this waves out like that, and then comes down straight from here, and then waves, and then comes just like that. So based on that, we're going to do his body, and then we'll come back to this arm and straighten that out. Um, from about the middle of the sleeve, I'm going to curve in like this and then curve out like that. Okay. For this one, I'm going to come down where his arm is right above it. Okay. I'm kind of going to follow this line where it comes in and out. Okay. And then I'm going to bring up this to meet that. And there's our scream guy. And now I'm going to erase. This is a super duper easy drawing, I think. Definitely less of a challenge than the one we did last week, which I think was a super accomplishment. That uh, blue vase by Cezanne. If you painted that along with me and drew it, that is super awesome because that it looks more like it looks scarier than it is. And a lot of these things do. Um, and this one, for drawing purposes, is really approachable because it's so simple. Okay, and a, there we go. And the lighter you drew this stuff in, the easier time you were going to have erasing the lines in the middle. Okay. Don't really worry about the inside of him just because we're going to paint him a dark color. And all we have left is we have this line that kind of contours. It's black over here and blue over here. Kind of contours him. So I'm just going to draw up around his hand and then go up and then out and then up again. And that is all that we're going to draw. The rest we're going to paint. Now... Um, you can see at the bottom of, you can see at the, the bottom left, the original painting. Um, it was done originally in pastels. So if you want to use pastels or crayons or something like that, go to. I'm mainly using watercolors because I've done them all in watercolor so far. And I'm amassing a really cool collection, which you can be doing too. So I'm going to get my watercolors and we are going to start painting.
Today I'm using a little set of 12 watercolors. If you have one of those Crayola or Prang or whichever ones, the little things with the eight circles in them, that will work perfectly fine for what we're doing. This is just what I happen to have here. So, the I say this every time I know, the number one rule for me in watercoloring something is to be careful not to run two, color, two wet colors into each other. So if I'm going to paint something next to something else, I really want that something to be dry. Which really just means that we're going to paint this as strategically as I can make it. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with some of the sky. I'm going to go ahead and do, I, get, I think the yellow. I'm going to do the yellow and that will include his face with a light yellow. So I'm going to do the lines of the sky that are yellow. It's that one, that one, that one, and that one. And I'm going to paint the lake. Um, and we'll get to that when we get to that. And I'm going to go ahead and like paint within the faces too, because that's the color they seem to be. So let's, let's paint. I'm going to dilute my paint a little bit because that looks too orangey for me. So I'm going to make it a little bit less strong. This is a very potent paint color, isn't it? Okay, that's all of the yellow except the face. Um, and what I'm going to do for the face is, it looks like it might just be like the, the, the paper turning yellow over time, because this is a very old painting. Um, I definitely don't want it to be as yellow as this other stuff that I've done, so I can totally dilute it. And that's one thing I can do, or else I can use a different yellow. And in this case, I'm just going to not use much paint and use a ton of water. This is mostly water. There it is, the skin on our screaming guy. Now we have to figure out what can we paint without touching anything else, and I think the next thing we're going to do is this bridge. Now. The bridge is done with lines coming through here done in um, pastel. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to paint it. Okay, we're going to paint it all one color, but then we're going to come back and put lines in it. So I'm going to paint it a grayish color, um, a bluey gray color. Let's see. see Oop. that's running yeah that's like ha what happens when you put one color watercolor too close to another eh, more water I want it to be that'll do pretty light gray because I want it to contrast with this which we're gonna do dark so mix that up good and then I'm gonna paint this whole area with a bigger brush um, gray color. Um, if you're using straight up, if you have straight up black, that's great too. And there is the first thing we're going to do with this walkway bridge thing. Let's see. What else can we paint that won't touch anything? Is there any, anything else that we can paint that won't touch anything? Okay, what is the middle color? We can, we can paint this, this part well, no. We can paint the top orange, the top of the railing. Um, and then we will evaluate this situation up here afterward. But first, let's get this railing in. So I don't have an orange, so I'm going to make one. Um, I'm going to do that, excuse little fly, um, by getting this very orangey yellow in the first place. I just put it into some water. Okay, and then I'm going to add some red to it. You don't have an orange, you can do that way. Go that route too. Okay, let's see what this looks like. <laughs> that is orange. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go and I'm going to paint the top of each of these rails orange. There's our bridge. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and paint some orange in the sky. I think all this is dry enough. Be sure and feel yours to make sure it is dry before you start painting this part or else it's going to run together and you won't be happy. This top railing on mine anyway is pretty dry. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint this blue i'm just gonna go straight and get a i'm gonna do the the straight blue that i have um and just kind of have it pretty concentrated so it is uh pretty dark and i'm just gonna go paint all this swath of land i'm not gonna worry about this up here because we're gonna do that more diluted Okay, there's the land. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a small brush and I'm gonna paint the top person. Cause you see in the painting, the person at the top is a lighter blue than the person at the bottom. We're gonna paint him the same color as we paint him. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do the boat and then I'm gonna paint between the fence posts um, until I get to him. Actually, what I'm going to do is it looks like the lake is reflecting in this section. So I'm going to come back with a lightish yellow and do that. But all of this goes blue. Now I'm going to feel my sky, make sure it's dry enough. And then I'm going to paint this, these strips, um, a lighter blue which means I'm gonna get the, I'll get the same blue and I'll put it in there and then I'm just gonna put a bunch of water in it. See that? And always test your colors. Yeah, that's good. And try not to get your hands in this. There's my blue. Now, Next thing I'm going to do, this should be dry too. Hmm, I'm going to go ahead and put some lines in here. And the way that I'm going to do that, and I'll just show you on this thing, is I'm going to get some brown, whatever brown you have. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of make dashy marks, like just kind of quick like that. But I'm going to do it. Remember how, let's see, have we done a floor? There'll be why it'll be the same thing here, how it's wider here and narrower there. So this line will follow this one and this one. Eventually they'll fan out and this will follow that one. So let's just do it and you'll see. So, and I'm doing these like all light and hodgepodge. quickly see how that's coming Just do a few more and that way we're showing the direction of it without drawing actual lines I'm gonna go ahead and paint this the insides of the railings, I'm going to paint them a brown. I mean, they're pretty much black, but there's a little bit of brown in it. You can also mix some black into your brown or mix some blue into your, uh, into your brown, which I think is what I'm going to do. Brown is kind of close to orange, and adding blue to it um, desaturates it a little bit, and it makes it darker just like adding orange to blue does, um, so or blue to orange. So I'm just gonna put a little blue in here and I'm gonna make a dark brown color that kinda tends toward gray. Here, I'll use this scrap. Add a little bit more brown. Let's see what we get here. Yeah. So I have that color, I'm going to paint the insides of the railing. I'm 
Now I'm going to go back with my very diluted yellow and get that little tiny bit. So now all we have is this big black bit, the darker blue of these two, and really that's it. I forgot to paint in where his face is, so I'm going to take that same yellow that I just painted that little bit of bridge with and paint this. Okay, sop up some of that. There we go. That should dry that color. And then, since I don't have anything that's um, not touching, something that's wet. Oh, actually, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and paint this part now. You can just use black if you want. Um, I'm going to make it a grayish color but darker than that just because that big black stuff with nothing to break it up um, just seems I don't know um, if you're doing this in crayon go to and make those lines and that that adds some variety to it it's just when you know I and I guess the the watercolors themselves make things a little bit more interesting so we'll see what happens I'm interested to see that's good I'm going to get a bigger brush. All we have left at this point is this guy's clothes and this guy's clothes. But before we do anything, we have to wait for our paint to dry. Now you can wait, you can blow on it, you can use a hair dryer like I'm going to, whatever way, just make sure before you start painting him that this and that little bit over there and where if you painted that in late uh, make sure all that's completely dry you're going to have paint running into other paint everything's dry now and what i'm going to do is paint this guy and this guy the same color and the way i'm going to do that is you see it's they're blue but they're darker than the other blue so i'm going to do it just like i've been doing it um, in the other programs if you've seen them in the other art clubs I'm going to add a little orange to blue. Uh, it's going to darken it and it's going to desaturate it and we'll get closer to a navy color. Um, if you want, you can also add black to blue, but it's interesting to add orange to blue. Um, that's because they are on opposite ends of the color wheel. Um, and if you add a color to um, the, the it's opposite it's called its complement it desaturates it um, and it'll darken it too so if you want to see that check out one of my other art club videos where we talk about that we talked about it in the last one the Cezanne one and we talked about it a lot in the Van Gogh Starry Night one One of the nice things about watercolor is that you can re-wet it and still use it. So I'm just going to use this orange I already made and mix into this blue. We'll see what color we get. Oh yeah, see? See? That's what happened. It graded a little bit and it darkened it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. Let's see how close. Oh, that's bluer. I'm going to add actually a little bit more blue to this because that's close to that Payne's Gray, which tends toward blue anyway. So let's see what we got. Meh. Touch of orange. I want a middle ground there. That's good. Okay. So now I'm going to paint this guy, my smallest brush. And then this guy's clothes. And there you have it. Here's Scream. Don't forget to sign your painting. I'm going to do it right down here. I'll do it with, oh, we'll do it with that. Well, I don't have enough of that. I'm going to get some black slash dark gray and put in my initials. I'm also going to go back and put in some of that dark blue very carefully up here. Let's just strengthen. There we go. Those lines. Now, speaking of lines, if you want to, once it is 100% dry, 
100% dry. You can go back and line it. I'm going to line mine with a very soft pencil. You can also use a pen, whatever you want to use. Felt tip pen is great. Sharpie's great. Just be sure that your painting is 100% dry when you do it. That's the number one rule no matter what you're doing this with. So I'm just going to do this and strengthen my lines. Okay, I have it lined. Um, one other thing I want to do is I want to add some of the some lines to this. You can do that in pen, whatever you're using. That's great. I'm just going to do some kind of like hard podgy lines down here, and they're not exactly straight. They go in line with the other ones, like that. So I guess this is turning into mixed media, which just means you use more than one medium. And at this point, mine is um, watercolor and graphite. I'm just going to do that. I think this is helping. What you decide to do with yours, completely up to you. Okay. And now I'm really going to call it done. Um, I think it looks cool. I hope you enjoyed doing this with me. I hope you like your painting. Please take a picture of it and share it with the library social media. Ooh, I almost forgot to tear off the sides. When you tear off the sides, if you have something taped down, do it very slowly and carefully so you don't rip the paper. But please share whatever you're making with the library social media. There are links in the description. Um, we love to see and share whatever you guys are doing. Let's see. And you can join me again next week and we will do another painting. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but it will be one. And yeah, there we go. I need to start hanging these up. This is like five or so. I'm amassing a super cool collection and I hope you are too. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.